Hello, welcome to your 11th, yeah, this is the 11th, I got it right this time, Intermediate Lewis Scripting Tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to use bindable functions. Uh, so I already made my bindable here, replicated storage, and I'm just going to name it bindable func. Yeah, that sounds right. So, um localization table that's new I want to I want to open this up and see if it does anything okay oh okay uh, I'll have to check that out later sorry I got off track there for a second I've never seen that before <coughs> but they introduced this new thing called localization service and uh, that has to do with where you are in the world and uh, languages I don't even know what all I haven't checked it out yet but I don't think it's much of anything yet anyway um, name this one make another one named two so if you guys haven't watched my last video on bindable events you should do that for full details on how this functionality works but basically bindables are for use between a server script to server script or two local scripts on the same client not you can't communicate uh, uh, to from one local script on your client to another on another client it's on the same client <coughs> that would be remote event remotes <coughs> that you would do that with and it has to go through the server you can't communicate directly between clients anyway uh, one. Uh, also another thing, unlike bindable events and remote events, where you can uh, connect as many fu uh, functions to subscribe to the event as you want, with a bindable event, you can only set one callback for it. So that goes a little bit like this. Uh, I'm gonna wait one to give the callback time to set up. Cause last video, uh, the first time I tried to record it, I I was I didn't know what I was doing wrong. Uh, I just had the code to fire to the bindable event in one script, and the event code on the other script. I had them both on line one. I didn't realize that what was going on was the code was executing at the same time, so it wasn't receiving the event. Anyway, uh, local result equals re replicated storage uh, wait for child bindable func invoke uh, print, print result. Um, let's ask for a random back and we don't need to pass in any data um, wait. okay I'm just gonna pass in two strings as data uh, beam get service replicated storage good for child bindable funk dot on invoke uh, wait sure that's what it's really called uh, on invoke yeah okay that should be defined as a function blah blah, blah. Uh, equals function quest data uh, if you guys don't know my system of using quote unquote requests and data arguments uh, it's just a preferable preference thing but I explain more in the bindable events and remote events videos so you guys should watch those if request equals string then lots of request equals color uh, just to demonstrate then um,
it's actually bad practice to, when you're instantaneating, instantiating something to set the parent outright like this when it has a lot of properties. But uh, maybe I'll, I think I mentioned that before, maybe I'll go over it in another video on like good performance or something. Return uh, table dot content data one. Uh, no, data. Um, okay. So, as you can see, it printed stream request received and it made the part in the workspace. And, uh, printed result is the, the combined strings of that I sent. Uh, I just put the uh, plus sign between them. Anyway, the reason that I printed string request received and made a brick is to demonstrate that while a while a uh, bindable function as well as a remote function has to return something as that's the point of it, it can also do whatever you need it to before it returns. Uh, I think one mistake I made a long time ago with a remote event in this way uh, is that I sometimes used a remote event to fire to the server and then I used that same remote event to fire back to the client to uh, you know give a result back or whatever instead of using a remote function. I don't know why I did that. I guess I didn't realize it, I wasn't experienced enough. That was really weird to me. <coughs> so if you guys don't know what table.concat does, uh, it just concatenates, concatenates all the contents of a table, uh, like each index of the table as a string, and it'll put whatever you, or the second argument is what to put between it, so I wanted a space, a plus sign, and then more space in there. You could just make it an empty string and it'll turn out like this. So, yeah. Uh, I'm just going to copy and paste that line, ask for color, and I'm not even going to pass in any data. I don't need to return break color dot random. Wait, did I make it print? I don't think I made it print. No. <coughs> Oyster. Is that even a color? I didn't know that was a color. Come on, Oyster, where are you at? I really wanted to see this oyster. Wow. Uh, workspace wait for child part dot brick color equals result. Here is a totally useful application of this. Okay, so that's oyster. Okay, no, apparently that's. Oh wait, no. Of course, it returns a random result every time. Duh. So yeah, that's bindable functions. Uh, functions are really cool. Go bindable functions. Uh, so uh, announcement, I'm on summer break. This is my second day being off school for the summer. So I think I'm gonna find time to push out a lot more cool videos. I might even upload again later today, who knows. I just love pushing out information to you guys and all that good stuff. So, I'm going to decide what to make the next tutorial on. Uh, I will see you guys in the next episode.